Hey guys, welcome back. And today we're going through number series. So in this specific topic, as you can see, we're offered a sequence of numbers and you have to find the missing number each time. And some questions will be straightforward and you will just have to work out the relationship between the first two numbers and then between the second and the third and so on. However, some will be more difficult, requiring you to add different numbers sequence. So let's get you armed and let's dive into it right away. Question number one. We see 22, 42, 64 and 88. So the first thing I typically do is identify if I'm going from a smaller number to a larger number. If so, I then know what operation to pick, which in this case can either be an addition or a multiplication. And remember, in many cases, there might be. So when I'm faced with these questions, the first thing I typically do is take a look whether the numbers are going up or if they're going down. And please remember that in many cases, there might be multi-step problems where you might be required to multiply and then subtract or add and then divide. So let's take a look at this particular question. So we see the difference between 22 and 42, which is to add 20. And then from 42 and 64, which is to add 22. And then from 64 to, 20, to 88, which is add 24. So you can see it's almost adding it by two every single time. So with 88, we'll go ahead and add 26, and that gives us 114. So D is our answer. I hope that was clear. Let's now move over to question number two. So we have 11, 61, 299, and 1,189. And this is quite interesting now. So we could simply get the difference between 11 and 61, or we could find a number that multiplies 11 to get us close to 61. So let's take a look. Let's go ahead and multiply 11 by 6. So if you times it by 6, we get 66. And then if we subtract 5, that gives us 61. Let's see if that works. Let's now go from 61 to 299. But this time, if I simply multiply 61 by 6, I get 366. And then if I subtract 5, I do not get 299. So let's think now, what other step could we take? Hmm, what if we multiply this by 5? and then subtract six. So we know that would be 305. And if we take six away, that gives us 299. So it almost seems as if we are decreasing the multiplication by one and increasing the subtraction by one. So what I mean by that is, for the next one, it might be a times four, but a minus seven. And then for the next one, it would be a times three, but a minus eight. I hope you're understanding where we are going with this. So again, if we have 299, and if we multiply this by four, we would get 1,196. And then if we subtract seven from that, we'd be left with 1,189. So it looks as if that pattern is working. And then for the final stage, if we have 1,189 multiplied by three and minus eight, we would get 3,559. And that there is how we answer this question. Okay, let's dive into question number three here. So now we are working with a number that goes down and then up. So let's take a look at the pattern here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the difference of my first two numbers, which I see is 196. And that looks like a square number to me. So I'm going to have minus 14 squared. So if you have 215 minus 196, that gives us 19. And then if I now look at 19 to 163, if I subtract that, I get 144, which again looks as if I need to add 12 squared. So it looks like our numbers are decreasing, but we're alternating between a subtract and an add. So now if I go from 163 to 63, the difference is 100 which could be a minus 10 squared. 
And then for the next one, we know it will be an addition and we'll have eight squared, which again will be 64. So for the next one, we know we'll have a plus eight squared, which will be 64. And if we add that together, we should get 127, which is B. So I hope you're getting a gist of the different types of methods that I'm taking to answer these questions. With that being said, let's dive into question number four here. So once again, just like question three, we are reducing our number and then increasing it. So what is the pattern between 160 and 80? Well, it's a half, right? So perhaps we can divide by two. But then once we get from 80 to 120, we won't be able to do that. So what about multiplying it by a half? It's the same thing, but we're multiplying instead of dividing. And then once we get to 80 to 120, we then know that we might need to multiply again, but this time it's by 3 over 2 because it is 1.5 times more than 80. And then from 120 to 300, we could multiply by 5 over 2. So again, I hope you can see how we are increasing our numerator by 2 every single time. So again, 120 multiplied by 2.5 will give you 300. And then over to the next one, we'll have multiplied by 7 over 2. So again, that's 300 multiplied by 3.5, which gives you 1,050, and A is our answer. Marvellous. So let's pause there for a second. And let's just recap what we've covered here. So we were required to find the missing number by working out the rule that the sequence of numbers is using, and then use that rule to extend the sequence to find the missing number. Now it's important that you understand the concept of sequences before attempting this. So if this is the first time you're attempting this paper, go back and watch our video, which is Sequences with Terence. You should see the link on the screen now, and that should give you a better insight into sequences before you dive into number series. But with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump into the next set of questions. Okay, question number five. So we've got four, five, eight, and 15. So again, we could have an add one, and then an add three, and then an add seven. But is there a pattern here where we can have it as an add two, an add four, and then maybe an add six? But we know 15 plus six is 21, and we do not have that as an option. So that doesn't work for us. Let's now think about squaring a number. So let's say if we go for one squared, so four plus one squared is five. And then if we have five plus two squared, that's nine. Ooh, so that doesn't work. So perhaps we could have a minus zero and then a minus one because two squared minus one gives you three and five plus three is eight. So that's a two step method there. And then from eight to 15, let's go with plus three squared, which is nine and minus two. So eight plus nine is 17, minus two is 15, so that works. And then finally to the question mark, we know it's going to be a plus four squared, which is 16, and minus two, which is 14. So 15 and 14 should give us 29. Minus three will give us 13. So 15 and 13 gives us 28, which is C. And that there is how you would work out this particular question. Marvellous. Let's go for question six. And please remember, don't forget to pause the video at any given time, attempt the questions, and then press play when you're ready to go through it. Okay, so for question number six, again, the numbers are increasing. And there's one thing that you should notice here between 27 and 64, that they are cube numbers. So let's try to work with our cube here. 
So to get from 19 to 27, what could we potentially add? Well, we know the difference is eight. So if the difference is eight, we know that could be adding two cubed. And then to get from 27 to zero, we could minus three cubed because three cubed is 27. And then maybe we could add four cubed. So from zero to 64, we know that four cubed is in fact 64. And then from 64 to the next number, we would minus five cubed, which means we'd have 64 minus 125, which would give you minus 61. And our answer is A. Marvelous. Okay, let's go for question seven. And what I'm actually gonna do here, I'm gonna pause the video here. I want you to attempt quest seven and eight, and then we're gonna press play when you're ready to go. Marvelous. So question number seven. We're now going down. So we're either working with a division or a subtraction. So let's see what's common between 122 and 62. Well, we can divide it by two and then plus one. So instantly divide by two, which is 61, plus one, which is 62. Once again, it looks as if this can work throughout the entire sequence. Divided by two plus one, that's 32, marvelous. And if we have 32 divided by two, that's 16 plus one is 17. So our answer is C. Okay, and for question eight, we're now increasing our numbers. And again, it looks like we're working with squared numbers and cube numbers. So let's take a look. We know this is seven squared. And we know to get 216, it is six cubed. But then for 625, hmm, let's take a look. Perhaps it could be going down in numbers and increasing in our exponents. So five to the power of four, four to the power of five, three to the power of six, and then maybe two to the power of seven. So again, if we calculate that, that does seem to work. So if we now have two to the power of seven, what should that give us? And that gives us A, which is 128. Okay, and now over to the final set of questions here. Once again, pause the video, attempt question nine, 10, 11, and 12, and then press play when you're ready to go. Okay, amazing work. Let's now dive into question nine here. So we know our numbers are increasing. So let's go ahead and start from 868 to 4,345. So let's attempt it by multiplying it by five. And we know 800 times five is 4,000. So that's near about. And by calculating this out, we know we would get 4,340. But if we add five, that gives us our answer. And just like the previous questions, I'm going to attempt by multiplying this by six and adding six. So you know 4,000 times six is 24,000. And if we accurately do this, we would get multiplied by six and add six. So I'm now going to reverse this order. I know it's gonna be times four and plus four. So to get from this to my question mark, I will divide by four and minus four which would then give me 216. Marvelous work. And for question 10, let's take a look at what's common here. So we need to get from one to 12. And we know 144 is a square number. So perhaps we could times by 12, times by 12, but this is where the problem occurs here and then times by 12. And now again, if we go ahead and times 1,728 by 12, that would give us 20,736, and that is our answer. Okay, let's go for the final two questions now, 11 and 12. So again, to get from eight to 4.5, what could we potentially do here? Well, we could certainly half it, so times by a half and then add 0.5. But 
but would that work for the next number? Well, as we've seen, these numbers are changing. So perhaps to get from 4.5 to 5.5, we will times by 2 over 2. So let's take a look at question 11. And let's fi find out the pattern between 8 and 4.5. Well, firstly, we could half the number. So we can start off by saying multiply by 0.5 and add 0.5. And then from 4.5 to 5.5, we want to perhaps multiply this by 1 and add 1. And then from 5.5 to 13, we could multiply it by 2 and then add 2. So I hope you can see how we're starting off with a half and then one, and then two. So it's doubling every time, which means from 13 to 56, we'll times this by four, which will give us 52, and then we'll add four, which also means that we are doubling every single number. So now from 56 onwards, we'll simply go ahead and times by eight and add eight, and that would give us 456, which is E. And then finally, question 12. The numbers are decreasing and then increasing. So again, I'll find out the difference between 19 and 16, which will give me 3. I'll then go ahead and find the difference between 16 and 44, which would be a plus 28. And then if we take a look at the difference between 44 and 107, it looks as if you have to add 63. But what's common between this? Well, what I've noticed here is that the difference between 28 and minus 3 is 25, and the distance between 63 and 28 is 35. So perhaps we are increasing this by 10 every single time, which means I'll take my 63 and I'll add 45 to this, which gives me 108. And then once I've done that, I can add 107 to it. So this is almost a quadratic equation, which gives me 215, and that is my answer. So let's go ahead and write this out neatly. So the first thing I'm going to typically do is just zoom in a little, just so we have a bit more space. So we have 19, 16, 44, and 107. So if we take a look at the difference, we see that it is 3. And then from 16 to 44, it is 28. But the difference between 3 and 28 is 25. And this is where your quadratic equation comes in. And then from 44 to 107, we get a difference of 63. And then from 28 and 63, it's a difference of 35. And this is the pattern that we must follow. So again, from 63, we add 45. And that, that gives us 108. And if we go ahead and add 107 and 108, that gives us 215. And that there brings us to the end of our video. Once again, you've come really far with these number series topic. Keep up the great work, and I hope to see you in the next video.